Hi everyone, it's Mr. Sinti, and today I'm going to talk to you about one of the great uh, five senses, which is the, the sense of smell. Yeah, the sense of smell is really, really important to us, and it adds so much pleasure to our lives, and it's extremely useful, and it's evolutionary, uh, evolutionarily very significant. And so, sort of, you know, starting off lightly here with it, you can see uh, this cartoon of Pooh Bear smelling the flower. Well, I mean, Pooh Bear and other animals like ourselves rely on the sense of smell to detect the location of things and also to determine whether something's good for us or not good for us. I mean, you can, you know very well that certain smells are encouraging and certain smells are uh, discouraging in terms of our behavior. And so all of this, the sense of smell has to do with the uh, sensory neurons that are called olfactory receptors. And these olfactory receptors are capable of detecting chemicals in the air that are called uh, odorants. And these odorants are picked up by specialized uh, neurons that are found in our nasal cavity. And these are called uh, chemical or chemoreceptors, chemoreceptors. So, the sense of smell is really important. And so, you know, again, as I mentioned, it, it's really helped us evolutionarily to avoid things that we shouldn't. Like, for example, when we smell a carton of milk and then it's gone bad, we know that maybe it's not safe to drink or, or safe to, uh, to uh, eat. And so our smell can help us um, navigate that sort of um, world taking in of knowledge. And so, you know, not everything smells bad. Things smell pretty good. Like, for example, you know, what, what is the smell of banana, for example, or what is the smell of a rose? And I, and I don't mean it sort of, um, sort of um, I don't know, emotionally, like what, what does it mean to smell? But uh, that physically, smell comes down to a chemical. And so the smell of banana literally is this compound right here. It's it's a it's a combination of the of an ester, which is this uh, carbonyl group connected to the, to the oxygen over here. And so a lot of our pleasant smelling uh, fruits come from the, this kind of chemical structure. And so what's interesting is smells like the good smell of brownie or, or popcorn or something. You know, when we smell these things, it it not only encourages us to want to uh, consume them, but it also stirs up memory. There's a strong association, not just visually with remembering something, but the smell of something can help us remember. And then again, you can imagine the the importance of that. Again, smell, meaning something's good, I'm going to remember that, or something smells bad, I'm going to remember that in terms of uh, you know associative behavior. Uh, learning, trial and error, something that smells good, something that smells bad, you want to avoid it. So it's sort of reward, punishment, sort of like B.S. Skinner kind, kinds of uh, conditioning. So what's interesting is I mentioned the chemical component. It's really fascinating, and I, I welcome you to, to go further with this. I don't want to go too far myself, but one of my personal favorite smells is the smell of almond. I really enjoy uh, just purchasing uh, a, a bottle of almond extract and just allowing that smell to come up into my nasal cavity. And this is what it really looks like right there, the smell of almond. And then again, this is that's a good thing. Bad would be skunk. And again, that's a, that's a warning that you know, you're in trouble uh, if you're uh, going to mess with this animal. And so this is a, a, a chemical that the skunk produces in order to um, warn off um, potential predator or sort of or discourage a potential predator. And again, this is the good thing of, of a rose, the good smell chemical of a rose. It's kind of interesting. This is what ginger looks like. And so it, we're talking about the shapes of chemicals here. And, and so inside of our nose, our, our olfactory cells are capable of detecting these chemicals, not only their their uh, their shape, but their their chemical characteristics as well, and so uh, we're familiar with this. We have lots of perfumes out there in the market, lots of perfumes and colognes, and organic chemists love to tinker with these and try different compounds and combinations of them. And again, uh, these are fragrances or odorants that are 
pleasurable and it, it possibly attract uh, one person to another as a result of a good smell. Or maybe the, the odorant is associated with the person and therefore when the smell uh, is, is picked up, then you'll remember that person. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of money involved in colognes and perfumes and, and, and smells of, of shampoo, smells of soap, all, all kinds of things. So the sense of smell is really, really uh, vital to us. And again, we, we tend to sort of think of smell as not being essential, but if you're an organism that lives, like for example, in the ocean, and it's dark deep below, you might be relying on your sense of smell in order to determine where a, uh, a prey is. Uh, so it can be rather important. And so the sense of smell is, is kind of simple uh, and direct. And so there's these neurons that are found in our nasal cavity right here. And what's interesting is here are the neurons and they, they travel right through the bone in the upper part of the nasal cavity right there. And so the olfactory epithelium so this region right in here is specialized to pick up the odorants, sort of in the upper part of our nasal cavity. And this makes sense because when you take a deep smell, it's, come, it's going to be shooting straight up into this region right here. So the odorants are going to be shooting up and encountering this sort of postage stamp size patch in the upper part of the nasal cavity called olfactory epithelium. That's what all of this is right there. And what is it? It's, it's neurons that are passing through the, the, these tiny holes of the bone in the skull. And, and basically, the neurons reach through uh, in the back there, uh, coalescing in what's uh, referred to as an olfactory bulb. And then those nerves kind of twist together in a fascicle, uh, forming the olfactory nerve, which then travels up into the brain, where we actually detect the smell and perceive what it is and put meaning to it, which is kind of cool. And so this conversation in this video is gonna sort of focus on this olfactory epithelium. And so a lot of the cells in the nasal cavity, as you may know uh, from your background in physiology is pseudostratified ciliated epithelium. And so those fun function to capture particles in, uh, in air which are not wanted, like for example, dust particles and bacteria. Now the mucus that is secreted by goblet cells are important because that'll help to serve the, all those particles and trap them and then ultimately we'll swallow them as our nasal cavity uh, connects with our pharynx and then down into the esophagus and into the stomach which will protect us. But these odorants which are shown here, like the, here's the rose, the odorant, and so these little purple dots right there, see these little purple dots, let me emphasize it, I'll go blue. These little purple dots are the odorants. And so those are diffusing from the rose and you're like, what does that look like? Well, as you recall just a moment ago, the smell of rose looks like this. So this is what that purple dot would be, this thing right here. And so this comes into our nose, kind of cool. It comes into the nose and it's picked up by these dendrite-like extensions of the olfactory epithelium. So all of these cells right here, these are the olfactory cells. And so they pick up, uh, in, in the cell membrane, they pick up that chemical, and therefore they open sodium uh, chemical gates and allow an action potential to, to take place. Ultimately, the voltage gates open up and the action potential occurs. And then that coalesces in the olfactory bulb, which is um, not in the nasal cavity, but it actually in the base of the brain right here. These little holes in the, <laughs> in the skull are sinuses. Um, these are literally like pockets right here. Uh, this right here is, is the lower part of the brain. This is your pituitary gland right over here, even though it's not labeled. Uh, and, and the nasal cavity has these folds right here which are kind of cool, which increase the surface area right there. And there's a lot of mucus. So the, the odorants are dissolved in mucus. And then here's the olfactory tract or nerve, which is traveling up into the brain. And again, these are the, this is the plate of the, of the, of the brain right here called the uh, cribiform plate of the uh, ethmoid bone right in here. This is again, the front of your nose. <laughs> Now, you're like, well, how come the bone stops right there? Because you have elastic cartilage uh, right up here. That's what the blue is. 
and then this is your uh, hard palate which is right below the nasal cavity so this is the oral cavity below this is a tooth here's a lip right there and then here's the soft tissue or soft palate or the top of your um, uvula which is a flap like structure that that protects food from coming up into the nasal cavity when you're when you're drinking or eating and so What's interesting is that this, these ciliated cells are quite easy to make out right here. You can even see the cilia under the light microscope. And this is the free space. And so the, these, uh, the cells of the olfactory epithelium, remember, are, are, are chemoreceptors. So they're picking up these chemical odorants. And so they're highly ciliated. And so here's a close-up of an olfactory cell. So this is the, literally the neuron. This is a support cell next to it and a basal cell below. So focus in on this olfactory cell right here. And it has these sort of dendrite receptors out here where it's going to pick up the, the smells. And so uh, the chemoreception is actually located in the plasma membrane of the neuron of the olfactory cell of, of olfactory epithelium. This is a cartoon drawing, but I really like it. This is the olfactory cell. Here's those support cells that are on both sides of it and then a basal cell, which is here and here and here. So this is inside the nasal cavity. And so the smells are coming in, they're dissolved in mucus, and they're being picked up by the cell membrane of the olfactory cell. And then again, an action potential is initiated. So in other words, it goes from negatively charged at resting potential to positive. And then that travels down uh, through, the, uh, through the bone of the, of the skull up into the brain. It's quite, it's quite remarkable. And so this is kind of a cool shot of that. The smell's coming into the nasal cavity. It's going through the skull. And the, here's the olfactory bulb. Here's a close-up of the olfactory receptor cells. Notice the extensions of ciliated uh, material. Now, cilia is a use. I apologize for just throwing out terms. The cilia, um, it's not technically your traditional cilia, like pseudostratified ciliated columnar but more of these ciliated extensions are more, more dendrite-like. In other words, uh, capable of picking up the odorants. And then that travels up into the brain where we're actually smelling and, the, and perceiving smell. I mentioned to you, like sharks, for example, are really good at smell that, that rely on it. Dogs are also very good at smell. They, they have, and you're like, well, why is this? Well, evolutionary, they... They, they lean on their smell. They're always smelling their world to try to know what's going on. And they, and they remember, again, they remember uh, individuals and they remember maybe the location of things based on, on the sense of smell. And we know that they're very good at smell, not just because of our observation, but we can actually take tissue sample and actually measure that they have a tremendous amount of olfactory cells in their olfactory epithelium, way more than humans do. So it's proven out. Here's the olfactory epithelium here, as you can see under the light microscope. And here's, here's where they coalesce into these fascicles in the nerve. And here's actual bone tissue here. So this is, uh, this is where the smells would be coming in, and they'd be picked up at the olfactory epithelium. And then, as you can see, the bundles are then collected in the, in the neurons, and then they travel through the bone up into the brain. Again, here in blue are the olfactory cells. Uh, here are just your ordinary epithelial support cells next to it. And then all these axons sort of tease their way through the bone and they connect into a big bulb, which is right up here in the, in the base of the brain. And so, uh, again, same thing, but maybe more pictures are more helpful. You can see here's the olfactory cells. Again, under the light microscope, they're not so beautifully... Uh, identified by color, but you can see them so clearly here. Here's the olfactory receptor cells shown in yellow. And here's your ordinary epithelial columnar cells right here that are, that are ciliated, shown in it's kind of reddish color. Uh, this is the cribriform plate of the bone of the skull. And then all of this up here is your bulb. This is your olfactory bulb where it's all coming together. Again, a a smaller view of this, here's the same thing, olfactory bulb, I mentioned this, which is the track that leads up into the brain. Here's the olfactory epithelium. So this is the place in the nasal cavity where you're actually smelling right there. And then this is the upper fold or superior nasal conch right up here in the, in the nasal cavity. 
So that's kind of cool. Uh, again, cartoon drawing, old factory up uh, bulb right here. Here's the old factory cells, the basal cells, the support cells of the pseudostratified ciliated columnar. Here's all the different odorants that are being picked up by the old factory cells. And again, a lot of mucus um, that are secreted by the goblet cells. The actual epithelium, olfactory epithelium, doesn't have a lot of goblet cells, but there's a lot of mucus nevertheless inside. So this is a picture of what it really looks like, the olfactory epithelium here, and you can see the cilia over here. And so this is where smells would be picked up in the upper part of our nasal cavity. Ah, it's more difficult, interesting, without things being labeled. But that's in, in lies the fun of, of, uh, of physiology. So I hope you enjoyed this brief video on the sense of smell. And, the, and again, the sense of smell is uh, picked up by uh, chemoreceptors, with specialized neurons that are found in the upper uh, region of the nasal cavity. Thanks for watching.